Aquaba, welcome to Tischler Talks. This is a platform where I, Tischler, have conversations with people from different walks of life who share their thoughts and pass their story thus far. I hope you enjoy. So welcome to Tischler Talks. This is episode three. We're the creator of Talking Twenties. Ellie, Wilmer. Ellie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So Ellie, obviously Talking Twenties is about being in your twenties. Mm-hmm. But before we continue with that, let's talk about your childhood. How was that like? Your okay. Um So my childhood, I had a, a very privileged childhood um, in the sense that I loved school and both primary and secondary. I've always enjoyed like education because I had I've had a big group of friends around me. Um, I've really been lucky in that aspect because my parents put me straight into dance and um, gymnastics and drama. So I always had like a lot of people around me. The only probably rocky part of my childhood is just that my parents got divorced and it was a very messy divorce. But actually, it's it's always for the best if um, for your parents to split if right. it, there's arguments and stuff. But I, it's brought me closer to both of them. Um, I'm bestest friends with my mum now. Because when you've got a single parent um, household, you just you just become like a tighter relationship. Exactly right. Um, so when when was that? That was it was a long time. So that's why I'm saying that it was it was, it was a bit rocky. Is the word I'm just going to use? But um, from year seven all the way to like year ten, wow. we were like off and on. I think um, couldn't really tell you when it actually properly ended because you we went back yourself. and forth. And there was a year where they lived together, although they weren't actually together Together. because it's just cheaper and my mum was um studying again so there was no way we could live in two different houses so that was a horrible year um they'll hate me talking about this (laughs) because they watch everything i do but um, but how how did you deal with that as a young child being from year seven to year ten because those are like some important years of your life yeah well i i I definitely blocked a lot of it out I i think i was really emotional seeing my parents upset at times that that was definitely the hardest um my brother's younger than me so when I was in year 10 he was still in um, primary school and he just I was a bit jealous of his age because he didn't understand understand anything anything that was going on like we had a day off school when something went really horrible and um he was just like yes day off school and I was just like it's not good you don't understand what's (laughs) happening it's not good um but other than that yeah I, I think it's definitely affected me and my relationships um I'm very much, I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't trust as easy because people that have been, have not seen like their parents like divorce. Okay. Like I, I see relationships as um, possibly ending and like you've got to protect yourself. Oh, okay. So when I, I, I did go through a bit of a messy breakup um, at secondary school. Right. Um, and that got quite public actually. It's like I'm famous, I'm not, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was Within like, your group, yeah. Within, within your... like... Um, in within Chesterfield, so right. it was just quite public. It got online, and it was just quite nasty. And that as well knocked me back into thinking about okay. relationships again. But I'm in a relationship now where I feel like really I'm trusting completely. So uh, yeah, it's definitely affected me in that sense. Yeah. So would you say it's been more about it's affected your relationship side instead of your school life as well? Yeah, it didn't affect my school side. It, um, I think it might have affected my brothers more so. Um, now he's older because he goes between households a lot. Right, okay. Um, and I guess I did that as well, but it didn't really affect me. I, I was very, um, I, I enjoyed school a lot and I, I enjoyed revising. Like I've even, I've, we've been cleaning out the loft recently. I've saved some of my revision cards because they were so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I, I, I enjoyed it and I, I just knuckled down because I the university was not an option of not going to university. It wasn't an option. Right. What you have, was it, do you feel like, that was you personally, it wasn't an option for you, or that's where, are you think that somebody already installed that in you? No, I, this is, uh, we, I was talking about this with my friends, um, it just, I've always just known I was going to university, it was, my parents never told me you had to go, like my brother's not going to go, and they're, they're happy with that, but it's just, Oh, you personally wanted to go? Yeah, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't me looking forward to it, because I actually really didn't like uni when I first got there, but right. it was more that, I didn't know anything else other than, I'm going to university, like, I think as well, um, the school we went to, am I allowed to say this? Um, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. Um, the school we went to, I think it's very academic. They didn't really like creative subjects. So they were very much academic focused. They wanted you to go. Um, they the wanted English to and math, your science and all, all that them, stuff. Yeah. Whereas I'm theatre, art <laughs> and stuff like that. So, um, but I think they instilled 
is that how you say it? installed? Yeah, they installed it. Installed it into us about university, I'd say. Um, not in a bad way because I loved uni. And, right. But I wouldn't. I don't know what I'd have done if I didn't go to uni. To be honest. That's interesting. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that your first year or so wasn't that great at uni. Why? So I got there, and like, like I've mentioned, I've had always had a great um, group of friends around me. Like I've got a group of ten girls. At, um, I'm very group of what? Ten girls. Ten girls. Ten. Ten. I think. I was thinking. Is that all right? Okay. Group of ten, group of ten girls. girls. Yeah, a group of ten girls. Um, so a big group, um, and we've stayed together from year seven. Oh wow! Now, okay. Which is quite rare. A lot of people like fizzle out, but we're like a strong group. Would you say all the dynamics are the same, as in everyone's as close to each other, or they're all? I'd say there's some people we don't see as much just because of now obviously we're in different places and at uni like we all adapted we've got different music tastes now we're all slightly different different, but I think that's what brings us closer together so in that aspect like we might not all go to the same festivals anymore like we used to or we're not interested in the same Same music but we all still love each other but yeah so coming from a background where I've got such a large group of friends around me and I'm, I was always the confident one. If we went to any socials, it'd be me talking to the strangers and like right. making everyone friends. I get to uni, everyone went a week before me and they were like, it's so easy to make friends. I got there and I just thought, I can't do it. I, I just, I kind of just shut down a little bit. And I moved into a flat where two of the boys weren't actually 18 yet. So we okay. couldn't go out as a big group. And your flat is your first group of friendship. Group your of hobby, friends, yeah. like, you, you rely on them. So it was just me and two other girls and I had a great flat. They were all so lovely. But I found it hard watching everyone around me make these massive group of friends because obviously I was used to having it, so Yeah, your ton friends, friends plus, yeah. And at, all, I'm, at home, I'm always the person to have pre-drinks and um, always have the pre's before we go to town. Right. So I have a big group of people and I just didn't have that at uni and I just was like, why, why not? And now I realise, if I could go back in time, I wish I'd joined a society... Like it's such an easy way to make friends. Makes, yeah. But I, my confidence was just knocked instantly and I just thought, this isn't for me. Um, my mum and dad picked me up every weekend. Um, really? For the first two months and I went home and I just cried in bed. <laughs> me and my friend Jess that also went to Leeds Uni. Um, we just was, we got on a train one day going back on the Monday. And we were like, we're going to make friends this week. <laughs> <laughs> it just it clicked for me when I did the pantomime because theatre... I got in a group there and that's where I met. So that's what you studied at uni? Yeah, I did okay. theatre, um, performing arts at uni. Right. Um, so, that, it, again, that was um, it's a very close-knit group. Yeah, so surely you would have made friends within that group. Everyone was really lovely. Um, I think I, pick, I picked the wrong accommodation. And it's a big thing. I, it, I wish it was emphasised more. I picked one of the nicest ones, thinking I want to make it feel like home. Right. It was the most antisocial one. Like, no one knocked on each other's doors and... Um, I could see everyone in theatre. They were making loads of friends at their accommodation. So, uh, yeah, everyone was lovely. And I hung around with them now and then at the start. They had their own flats that they were trying to get close to. In the end, I came so close to everyone on my course. It just takes a bit of time. Um, but, yeah, I made my my best friends in Panto in it. And I made friends through them. And then I now have a group of friends in Leeds. That's a group of 10 girls. Wow. <laughs> so, I'm, a, I'm very much a girls' girl. But I didn't like it at first. It, I, I've never really ever experienced anxiety until I went to uni. It was that bad for you? Yeah, really bad. I went to the doctors um, and I um, tried to get um, just anxiety, panic attack um, medicine, just to right. calm me down. I can't remember what it's called now. And I didn't really need them too much in the end because after Christmas, it all just started settling down. They oh. always say stay till Christmas and it's so true. Um but yeah. So and what advice would you give to people who are now going to uni and thinking about making friends? I'd say if you are feeling like, this wasn't my case because I did love my flat, but if you're feeling like they aren't your bestest friends, like go, get into a society straight away. That It's the best way to make friends. Just You're thrown in amongst people that also are doing, especially if you're a first year, just trying to make friends. And there's like 60 people around you. There's socials every Wednesday. And you just make a lot of friends that way and then you make friends through them and it just... Right. I think another thing that really uh, hindered me when I first went to uni was the breakup that I was on about before right. happened then. So I had everyone online getting involved. I was also like going through a breakup so and I probably loved him. So I was dealing with that, moving away from home. So it was just like a amalgamation of things. I'm guessing the guys at, um, at your uni didn't know about the breakup as well. 
then they had to in the end because I was so emotional about it. Oh, but they, okay. they did. They came and sat on my bed, all my flatmates, and they were just like, "What's going on? What yeah, happened?" I was just crying. Just but yeah, uh, it seems like a lifetime ago now. But yeah, wow. And, that, and I'm actually known by one of my friends. That's my best friends now as. Um, the girl that starts arguments on Twitter <laughs> because <laughs> because of what happened because in the past. I always try and like defend my name on Twitter because I kept getting messaged on Twitter saying I've done this and that and I'm not and it just enraged me so much because loads of people were liking it I think that was like my first online abuse I've ever had right. um, and I'd always defend my name and it would it made things worse I should have just ignored it and my friend but why, why were people just attacking you online as in why did it have to go online Um, I would say that Part of that was my fault because I, when I was upset, basically it was all a cheating thing. And right, I was okay. upset. I tweeted like an indirect tweet as you do at like 18 years old. Never do that anymore. <laughs> um, but, um, and it, then since then, I just sometimes would get tagged in stuff. Tagged in stuff. I'd see my name uh, and I'd just see things like that were tweeted on purpose to like annoy me. Right. Um, but yeah, I just got myself involved. And one of my friends, every time I went around to the flat, I'd have something else to say. Right. and they find it funny and it was always funny it was, I was never like emotional going around to the flat like look at this I was just laughing about it but yeah she knew me in first year as the girl that was always in Crying. an argument on Twitter I'm not like that anymore I don't even I try, don't even post I think I'm scarred <laughs> <laughs> wow so you'd say you've already had um, a traumatic experience with relationships yeah so I'm guessing that also harmed you a bit going into your first year with making friends because if you've already had a past of your parents have split up and you've just gone through a breakup so yeah. making friends with is it was it just male friends I'm guessing or just friends in general um friends in general just not because I didn't trust um friends obviously I wasn't even really interested in finding a relationship at that point but it was just more that my confidence was knocked and it was definitely, I don't want to say humbling, but like, <laughs> like a life lesson because I I was always the confident one. Um, so that was my first experience of not feeling myself. Like You've been out of place. Yeah, like. and I'd usually be like the first one in the room to just be like, hi, but I just felt out of place. Like, I remember going to one pre's and it was with a different flat and I just left it crying because I was like, I just, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I felt like I couldn't speak to people. Wow. But yeah, like but I said. How, how'd you get out of that hole? It was definitely about getting into that pantomime where I met, because um, we were rehearsing hourly, uh, lots of hours, sorry. Um, so I was spending loads of time around. Um, well, I was busy as well, because I was going through that breakup. So doing that made me busy and I wasn't thinking about it. Um, and I was with people for hours while we were rehearsing. So I came really close to them. And then after Christmas, um, I continued staying friends with them. So it was just about finding like the right group of people. Though I loved my flat and they were all lovely. You know, when you click for life with people yeah. and I clicked for life when I met my best friends in the Panto, which was like three girls. Um, and then I met people through them. Okay. Wow. Gosh. Um, so where did Talking Twenties come from? Okay. So Talking Twenties came from uh, when I graduated from uni, it took me ages to find a job. Um, and that was one of the most draining, like emotionally because draining. Of... Just because I don't think I had enough experience. I went to uni, I think I came out expecting it to be a lot easier than it is. Um, and I didn't have enough experience. So, and this is another regret of mine. If I could do uni again, I'd do so many internships and like prepare myself. But I just had a good time in the end right, okay. <laughs> at uni and I just enjoyed it. And I like can't have regrets, but that you is... You think you lived more in the moment instead of planning a bit more? Definitely. I didn't didn't invest enough in myself when I was there. Um, I heard people doing internships in summer. I didn't really understand like Why? the value okay, of it okay. until my friend did it in second year. But obviously the only summer left after that summer was the one year. when I was looking for jobs. So I, d I, tr I was desperate to do an internship that summer, but it was a bit too late. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so it was just emotionally draining, like getting no responses. Some, most of them rejections if they were a response. And I saw on BBC radio, they did a new voices competition. Okay. In my head, I thought the prize was to become a, a radio host because okay. it said, have your own radio show or work on existing shows. So I'm obviously thinking, this is right, the here we go. theater. I'm literally like, this is the start to my dream career. And it was, it was a bit of a competition. It wasn't like an interview. So you went in and you 
told a 60 second story and I decided to tell a 60 second story about how things always go wrong for me and I made it a little bit funny um and they liked it and they put me through so out of 200 people I think it was it went down to about 60 wow okay and then it went down again and I got down to the final five and I that like really got my confidence up because I think I just had so many rejections I was like, I can't believe every time they said my name, I was like, I can't Are you sure? <laughs> Is it really me? Yeah, because it was some people, it was a lot of a, a older demographic that was there. There were only a few young people in the final kind of bit. Okay. And so they were more experienced. They'd been on radio a lot. I've never really been on radio. I did do a bit of work experience um, in secondary school, having my own radio show, but it was not professional. I, mean, I was just having fun on it. Yeah. Um, so every time they said because I could hear their auditions and we had to watch each other and every time they put me through I was like are you sure like what about him yeah <laughs> what about them? so I got down to the final five I didn't win but the final five got to work on existing shows so I go on the radio two times a month just like to fill in but I thought the prize was to have your own radio oh. show like but it wasn't it was just a one-off radio okay. show so it was all right that I didn't win in the end but um yeah so after that I thought the confidence that it gave me, like the adrenaline of like everything going well, I was like, I'm going to start my own podcast. And I <laughs> welcome to your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and because I'm, I'm very much in that. I would love to be in that industry of like um, YouTube influence and like I just think it's a great industry. Like you've got so much freedom. It's creative, and you do what you like. I'd love to do that. Like that would be a dream. Um, so I thought, and and I did pitch the idea for Talking Twenties in the radio okay. um, show, and. I didn't call it Talking Twenties at the time. It was just something for 20-year-olds to just feel inspired um, and not stress about the little things because I think that's what we do. Um, so then I bought all the podcast equipment and I set up the Instagram page to advertise it. And then lockdown hit and everyone started a podcast. So I thought, right, I'm not going to start a podcast right now. Also, I was finding it so hard just to manage the Instagram page right. because I'd never done anything like that. And God... Do I have so much respect for people that have Instagram <laughs> pages? Because I work full time now, and that on top of it is it's it's a lot of work. So I try what, and create. What, what every... do you have to do for those who don't know how hard it is to run a page? Yeah, so I didn't. Re- I kind of want to create my own content. So I see a lot of pages repost other people's um, right. stuff, which is which is fine. And I think I will probably start drip feeding that in a little bit. But I try and create all my own content. So first of all, learning how to create the content in itself was like. If I go back down to my old posts, I cringe because they're just, they look awful in my because <laughs> I've learned so much. But um, yeah, so I had to learn how to use like Adobe and like Canva just to create all, because it's a bit of a quotes inspiring page. And then it's got some like educational content, like okay. how to be more optimistic and just little things like that. And then I started getting people involved in it. And so that, that took the pressure off me a bit because all they had to do was send in their yeah, advice. Okay and a photo and I could upload that so but what would you say is like the reason why you wanted to start is it aside from because obviously you could have surely picked anything else to talk about for the radio show you had yeah but why talking 20s um definitely because of the period of from August to November of not having a job I found it so draining and I found the I, I guess it was going from 19 to 20 was a big change as in what was going on in my life not necessarily the jump from the numbers okay. but m- leaving university um and like post-university depression is such a thing like you've you've left all your friends that you live with you're back home you're not you're not you can't go out on a monday tuesday wednesday thursday yeah. friday uh, so it's so even much- a bigger jump from leaving school as well because yeah as soon as you left school sure you're back into university and then it's like a, a, a school for big kids but as soon as you left university then it's just you and yourself yeah yeah and that's, that is one of the sole reasons why I started it because I felt like our 20s are so defining because this is where you're going to, you might, you might have a child in your 20s, you might get married, you, you're going to find your career in your 20s, like, right. but it's not any, no one lands on their dream career straight away and it's such a journey, but it, I, I felt like all my friends around me, once we left uni and like kind of start in our 20s where we're like an adult now we were so stressed we weren't living in the moment we weren't being present um and we were just worrying about where we were I was comparing myself and social media's got a big um hand with the hand in this comparing myself to everyone on Instagram not 
I'm not someone to compare like body image or something like that, but comparing if someone Their was progress. a job or just like where they, if they were living in the city, cause I want to move back to a city. I was just like comparing every aspect of my life financially, career wise. And I think everyone does that and it's something like not spoken about enough. So that's why I started it to like, to show other people's stories and to show that everyone's on different paths and it doesn't matter if someone's just bought a house at 21, mm. if you buy one at 29 or if you buy one in your forties, it's like, we're all on different journeys and we don't need to compare them to each other. So that's yeah. the main. It's interesting because anytime I've mentioned your, your page to somebody, it doesn't say what, what is it about? So I always, I always say um, something like, when you're in year nine, you know you're 14 or so, you know that you have your GCSEs coming up, you yeah. know exactly what's happening. Same with year five, same with year 12 and year 13. But as soon as you've, you know, you leave school, even at 16, there's yeah. no real set thing you should do. Like no. you're saying, like you could be 24 and married. Yeah. You could be 30. So you could be 29 and, you know, um, still jobless. Yeah. But because there's, there's no set routine and everyone looks online yeah. to social media and whatnot to find that gratification. And it's bad to do that because obviously you only post your highlights on your social media. Very true. Um, so I do, that's why. You, I, you, had, you had a quote that says something like, nobody posts their... Um, was it that? I think either you had a quote, I saw something which said something like, nobody posts their failures on social media. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because no one does. And, and that's why I like the page because people do talk about the struggles they've had in their 20s. So And then people are like, I feel like that all the time and they can relate to it. But yeah. What would you say? Can you share some of your favourite quotes? Oh my God, can I pull it up? Yeah, yeah, feel free. I've done so many. I couldn't. <laughs> um, so there's instantly the first one comes to mind that I'll have to read out. Because I think this is one of the quotes that I was, as soon as I started, I was like, that's got to go on there at some point. So let me just, so in your 20s, your 20s are your selfish years. It's a decade to immerse yourself in every single thing possible. Be selfish with your time and all aspects of you. Tinker with, swear word, I'm not going to say it. Travel, explore, love a lot, love a little and never touch the ground. Because this was, for me, I was like, this is the whole thing about immersing yourself and just being present felt like I wasn't doing that so right. I mean a lot of the stuff on the page like I'm I'm giving advice but it's advice that I'm trying to take as well as well because yeah. you're all sitting that period no, I'm not a perfect 20 something year old I'm I'm trying to learn, learn it as, as well, as like, well. I post advice on that I'm not even doing myself but it's to like <laughs> I'm trying to do it as well and yeah. I'm only 20 too soon so it's like I don't know everything which is why I like to getting people involved because yeah who are older than you still in their 20s yeah because for example I don't know how what being a young mum's like because I'm not a young mum so I got someone on there that's that is a young mum I like to talk about that I'll get one more quote up but so uh, the page is doing well so far like how have you found um like since you started it how's it been well I, hard really hard work because there's a lot of people doing the same stuff right and you notice instantly when you start they all follow your page so um because you, you, it is a bit of a community. You're all in competition with each other, really. But most right. of the time, everyone's like really lovely and like tries to help each other out. But you also don't want to help each other out too much because you don't want the same followers. <laughs> right, so okay. So it's like, there's a bit of, I want to be nice, but I don't want the same followers because we're doing the same, same thing. Same we'll just thing. have one page. Yeah, there's a lot of positivity pages, which is in in a nutshell, If you that my page is just a positivity page. Um, it's just trying to spread more positivity and right. like inspire people. Um, I mean, there's literally an account that's, we are practically the same. And to be fair to her, although I came up with the idea on BBC Radio, she started it before me. So like, I, I, I instantly though, and this isn't petty, I, <laughs> I'll explain why I did it. I blocked the account because I saw that we were starting to like, because we were competing with each other. We started creating the same content and I didn't want to create the same yeah. content because she did message me and we were like, communicating about how we could work together. I was like, I just don't think we can because we're so similar. So then I blocked her and then I recently unblocked her and I'm so glad I did it because she's gone down such an educational route with it and it's like very informative, whereas mine's a bit more relatable. Like I've got the confessions and it's right, not okay. as like informative. It's it's just a bit of a bit of fun, fun here and there. So So what are the confessions? What is what is the upside to it? I so that's probably the thing I'm most proud of proud about at the page. Um I, I came up with the idea just to do confessions i think it's because i listen to the girls bathroom podcast okay um and they it's not confessions but people write in like an agony aunt um and they say this situation is going on and 
they respond saying their advice. Okay. Um, and I just thought I could do confessions of a 20 something year old. Mm. So I set up an anonymous Google form and I just let it, I just let it fly, let, let it, it fly, thing. see what happened. And like, I loved it at first because it was just like people were sending in some hilarious stuff. Some everything was a bit sexual, to be honest. Yeah. As you can expect with the, the age it, yeah. range of 20 to 30 year olds, they're all like funny stories. Um, but then, so I kind of like tried to release them one by one, like not not one by one, but like but stagger them a bit. Stagger them a bit, and then I recently put it into a Leeds um, a Leeds University page, and so many people sent stuff in from that university. So, so you've got loads of content to come. I've out. got loads of content to come out, but um, yeah. So I'm back onto the challenging part of the pages right. that a lot of Chesterfield follow it. So when I was doing these confessions, a lot of people from Chesterfield were posting in, and I could tell. I didn't want to become one of these, um, what was it? Can you remember the pages that used to come out? Like um, uh, showing someone in Chesterfield. They're like exposing oh, people exposing, in Chesterfield. Oh, exposing, right, okay. I didn't want to be one of those pages. But then I also, because I don't know who's put, posted them in, right. it might not be about, there's just a few things. Things that you thought could be about certain people. It was about some of my friends sometimes. And I was like, but I can't not post it because I don't know it is that. But I also don't want to, I don't want to be a drama page. I don't want right. to cause people to argue. So I've had to Would like, you say the stories are that, is it that obvious sometimes? Or so is one it... was very obvious, basically saying about, it was basically practically saying our school. Right, okay. But not saying our school. And I, and it was about a, something about cheating. And I was like, I felt, I, I archived it in the end because it could have been about a few people. And if it was about, I didn't. Who I you didn't, thought it was, I right? If it was that unnecessary. Was about me, if that was about me, I, I shouldn't have posted it in the first place. But I didn't actually click that it, could have been about our school right because it might not have been and i still don't know because like, like yeah, i, said, I actually don't know who they're from but when i was like i was like if it is it's just two people yeah. so i took it off That's and awesome. I, I monitor a bit more now because a lot of the time i'm in such a rush with the post because i'm like i'm trying to like keep up with it all the time and you've got a job as well yeah because i've got the job i don't read into everything too much and i've been telling myself recently i need to like again be present with it like enjoy it not get stressed with it the minute that i really stop enjoying it i won't do it like i'm not gonna yeah. stress myself out um but yeah i need to be a bit more present and read the confessions properly <laughs> what's the could you share a pg one with us by any yeah. chance i saved one in advance i appreciate that so this is one of the first ones that i had and it was um uh, when I read it, I was just like, wow. <laughs> so it said, my confession is that I'm engaged to a man and I love him, but I also love my best friend, a girl. So complete different one. So uh, that one was just a bit. It's interesting because how how would you advise that person? Like, What would your advice be? So I don't, I never give advice on it. I just post the right. confessions, but I, I don't know what advice I would give to that. I would just, I would always say if you're in love with someone else to just do it well leave the other person never never lead someone on um but yeah i never i never give advice because some of the confessions sent in were just way over my <laughs> way yeah. over my head to give advice and and it's not i never judge any of them like people that send them in it's like a no judge zone like you can say what you want you know? would you say judge, uh, judgment is real though especially in your 20s would you say yeah, yes judgment is very real i think and expectations and yeah, such, things like that if you're in for example, what I've seen recently, which really annoys me, especially because people are becoming um, made redundant and stuff at the minute, tw late twenties or even just in your early twenties, people going back to working at shops and pe feeling judged about that or feeling ashamed. Like there's no no need. To Why do you think that is? Because we've we've grown into a society where everyone everyone wants like the flashiest jobs and it's like a lot of a lot of the time like. It, that's not reality like there's no jobs about these days it's it's a very hard economy especially now yeah exactly it's like yeah. not everyone can do their dream job not everyone not everyone can afford to do internships as well this is a big thing like getting the experience you need to get these flashy jobs you no one can work in london on an internship at six pound an hour no, unless you've got parents in <laughs> yeah, london I know so there's such a, a quality divide there like especially with the arts obviously i'm in there so i see this divide all the time how are people that have no connections to London supposed to take up jobs th that they need to get into that career? Like if they want to work at ITV or how, because the in, in uh, the internships or the graduate schemes, they're like 16 grand. You can't live in London on 16 grand. It's, so it's like, it's, it's, it's cut for an elite group oh, of people already. Definitely. It's, 
it, and it's definitely and obviously this is just about the industry I'm, t- I'm in theatre industry it's about who you know so right. if you're in London and you've grown up in London you're going to have more contacts in London so it's, it's all about who you know so it's, it's definitely an unfair um, advantage but okay. th- this is what I mean no one should be ashamed because it's not not everyone loves their job and it, it, it's something that's been shown on Instagram like all these quotes like you've got to love what you do it's sometimes it's it's hard to love that especially in your 20s where you're just you're working your way up there okay. maybe in your 40s you'll be able to get most jobs that you go for because you've got all the experience and you might be able to find a job that you absolutely love but it's very hard mm-hmm.